Hello guys, how you doing? In this video, I'll tell you what will happen the very first day you land in Canada, which all questions might be asked from the immigration officer. And also I'll give you a video tour of Toronto's Pearson International Airport. Okay, so when you're there in the flight, looking down at the land of Canada, you'd be given the immigration form where you have to submit the basic details like uh, your, the country where you're coming from, your flight number, your passport number, and the cost of the goods that you're carrying along with you. Just to declare the you know, duties as well. Just in case, uh, you know, you do have any costly materials there in your baggage, just declare it because just in case if you lost, uh, if you lose the bag, in that case, you know, you lose your luggages, in that case, they would refund you that amount, exactly that amount, which you declare, okay. Now, I've been told that this process has changed a bit lately. I'm not very sure of it, but what happens now is that as soon as you land in the airport, you land at the airport rather, uh, what you get is, you get to see is the um, you know, few kiosks, actually many kiosks, just like the ATM machines. What will happen over there is that you have to scan your passport and the machine will take your photograph. And after that, uh, you have to give all the same details uh, which was which you were supposed to give in that immigration form manually through your hand. So this is more of an automated process now. Now, when you, you know, when you complete all that uh, processing, after that, what will happen is uh, you have to go there uh, to the immigration officer. This is the first level of immigration for minded. As soon as you, you know, reach the immigration officer, you'll tell him that, you know, it's the first time that you and your family are coming there. Or if you're alone going there, no, accordingly, if you're going there alone. So you have to tell them that you're, you know, Im immigrating as a permanent resident. You have to show your uh, COPR, which you'll get, you know, from the visa office and your passport as well. Then, you know, they will direct you to a second level of immigration. Now, this immigration lane will be only for the uh, permanent residents who are coming there. You know, it might depend from uh, time to time, you know, it might be possible that your flight has got many uh, uh, immigrants actually who are coming there for the first time. So in that case, that uh, queue might actually be long as well. What happened in my time, you know, it took around 15 to 20 minutes uh, the waiting time. And then after that, you know, I reached the immigration officer, minded the second immigration officer. Okay. Now, uh, what will happen here is that, you know, you would be asked a certain number of questions, not any certain as such, but yes, you'd be asked a few questions. So what that questions can be, first of all, uh, you know, before I come to that questions, it's important to, you know, note down the documents which would be needed. So you should have the, um, you should have your passport, of, of course, the first of uh, the foremost document which you should have is the passport. Also, you should have the COPR, which is the second most important document. Of course, uh, when you have your COPR, they would stamp it over there. So it's, it's very useful to have it handy. Apart from that, you should have your proof of funds. Remember, you had, you know, you settled your proof of funds uh, at the time of submitting the application. You should have it now because they might ask it. I'm not saying that they'll certainly ask it, but they might ask it. Now, the very important thing which will happen is that they would ask you questions about your address in Canada. Where are you going to go for the first time when you, you know, the first day or probably the first month? So there you should give your address. Mind it, if you're going to take a temporary address for one or two, uh, you know, weeks, try to give a permanent address because, uh, you know, where, you know, you have to get your PR card. The address which they'll note down over there They'll send the address. Uh, they'll send the PR card directly to that address. Okay. Now you can also change uh, that address when you settle to a permanent uh, address. You know, probably after a couple of weeks. So it's very important to give the uh, address over there. You should have an address with you. Now this address might be you know a temporary or a permanent one, or maybe a friend's address, uh, which where who just can collect your PR card on your behalf. Okay. They might also ask a couple of more questions. Just like if you're landing there with with your job offer, they might ask you questions about your job. You know, what all duties you might uh, you'll be doing over there, and questions like these. They might ask you. You know, they might interact with you. Um, just like 
if you're coming from India, okay, what what is the weather like there in India? Have you been to Canada before? Things like that, pretty casual. And you need not worry about this immigration. I remember my times, I was a bit worried because, you know, I landed there with the, uh, with the job offer because I got the internal job posting in my company. So I was a bit worried, you know, what questions will they ask? Will they ask about my job duties? Will they ask about... Uh, you know, uh, visa questions, but they didn't actually ask any questions. They just asked uh, where you're going to land, you know, um, in are you going to stay in Toronto or are you going to, you know, settle somewhere else? Just basic questions. Okay, as soon as you're done with the formalities for your immigration with the immigration officer, you move on to the next desk. This is uh, about the SIN number. Here you'll get the SIN number, which is a nine digit number. For uh, the you know for all the basic formalities, which is actually a national identity for Canada, just like you know people in Aadhaar, people in India get the Aadhaar number, you know similarly. So you should have a SIN number if you are there in Canada. Uh, only after that you'll be able to open bank accounts and all. Okay, so the SIN number probably if there are not many people, you'll get it in five ten minutes. But there are you know generally there are queues for that, so uh, you might it might take some time for you to get the SIN number. So, you know, just take uh, you know, 30 to 40 minutes for the SIN number. Okay, uh, moving on. You now, please make a note that you should you have to carry that paper. You have, at least you should have the SIN number somewhere safe, maybe in your mobile or somewhere. Take a snap of that because it's the most important thing. Now, you've got your COPR stamped by the immigration officer and you've got the SIN number as well. After that, you have to move out of the airport. I'll give you a video guide of the Toronto airport. I just went last week over there, so I thought of making this video for you guys. So it will be helpful for you. Okay, before I start that video too, let me tell you quickly that if you don't get a SIN number over there at the airport, what you can also do is you can go to the Service Ontario, actually Service Canada. There are two different offices, Service Ontario, if you're landing there in Ontario and Service Canada all over all over Canada. So you'll get the Service Canada, you can go to Service Canada offices and you'll, you can get your SIN number, you know, whenever you want, maybe a couple of days later. After, only after you get the SIN number, you'll be open, able to open the bank accounts. So SIN number is so important. So make a note of that as well. Also, you'll be given a complete package, um, which will contain a book, you know, something like this. So this will be a book which would be given to you uh, at the time of immigration, somewhere around the you know desk of SIN number, and uh, it will contain the basic details of uh, you know settling in Canada, what should be done. You know everything is available on the internet, but yes, this book can also be helpful. So keep this book with you, and it will help you in the early days. Okay, now let's begin with the video tour. So guys, this is the Terminal 3 of Toronto Pearson International Airport. Yesterday I went to pick one of my family members, so I decided to shoot this video to help you guys. This would be the exact gateway you'd be coming out from if you land in Terminal 3. And uh, the other terminals are also very similar. So right next to this gate, you would find the information center where you can get the maps of the area. You can also ask for the local transport where you can get from the metro from, you could get the buses from. So these guys are very helpful. You can go and talk to them. And uh, right next to this information center, you would be finding this Chatter desk. Chatter is the telephone, you know, mobile network provider. You can uh, go to them with your passport. They'll provide you a prepaid SIM. They're actually pretty cheap. Actually, I found them the cheapest probably in this region. And the network is quite good. However, if you go out of Toronto, you know, it, you might suffer with some network issues, but within Toronto, GTA region, you won't find any issues. And they're quite cheap as well. So you can get this SIM right at the airport. If you move left towards this area, you'd be able to find this currency exchange office where you can actually exchange your uh, currency with the local currency, which is the Canadian dollars. Right next to it, you'd also find in currency exchange ATM, which does deals in uh, the um, different currencies as well. I don't think there'd be rupees in here, but there's certainly Canadian dollars and US dollars. 
right opposite to it you'd be able to find this CIBC ATM if you've got prepaid cards or you know people arriving uh, with the ATM cards they can actually take out the money the cash from this ATM as well and right next to it there is this telephone booth if you haven't got any sim card any mobile phone you can call your relatives and friends from this telephone booth if you move further towards the left you'll be able to find uh, this outlet Tim Hortons very very famous in Canada you see the queue over there it explains it all you can find you know coffee and some breakfast for yourself moving towards the left you'd find the exit gate over here and uh, if you know you decide to move further you'd be able to find some local transport like buses and the uh, trains the metro trains let's go out and check out you know where you can find the cabs and taxis from so if you just take go out and take a left you'll be able to find the prepaid taxis over here and uh, you know obviously you can book it book them earlier or you can book them from uh, the uh, international airport itself so uh, you can go to the Toronto GTA region wherever you decide to go so guys thank you so much for watching this video this was all I wanted to explain to you this was the, this will be the first day you arrive in Toronto thank you